Hi, welcome to my session on Elasticon on securing your deployments on Elastic Cloud using Private Link. I'm Shubha and I'm a senior product manager on the Elastic Cloud team. So just a little bit context setting on this session. Uh, this is a very beginner friendly session. So I will start with an introduction to Elastic Cloud and then go into talking about what is private link. Every cloud provider calls it a little bit different. So AWS calls it private link, Azure also calls it private link, but GCP calls it private service connect. And then I'll talk about how private link makes security management easier for, uh, you know, if you're moving your data to the cloud uh, and why it's important and the challenges it helps solve for you before I go into the demo. So Elastic Cloud is our hosted managed offering. And as Shai, our CEO says, Elastic Cloud is the very best way to consume all the Elastic has to offer. Uh, so all our products and solutions. And it basically takes away all of the boring parts of managing the infrastructure and you know, managing your Elasticsearch clusters and helps you focus on what is most important for your business. In terms of our experience running Elastic Cloud, we've you know, run Elastic Cloud for over eight plus years and we host tens of thousands of clusters across the three major cloud providers in 45 plus regions and ingest terabytes of data across all of those clusters. And we have great marketplace integration. So you have a simpler life in terms of billing and how you manage your costs on those uh, major cloud providers. Before I walk into you know, giving you a demo, I just want to go quickly into why Private Link is important and give you a sense of what Private Link is. Uh, because it is a newer concept. It just came about in the last two to three years. Uh, and Google Private Service Connect is even more recent. It was just launched and GA'd a few months ago. So Private Link is a secure way of connecting from a consumer network to a provider network. Uh, and what that means is that in this case, the consumer network is your Elasticsearch client that might be running in your own VPC or VNet. And the provider network uh, is our network where you've hosted your Elasticsearch cluster or your Kibana or your APM server, you know, whatever it is. So you're basically connecting securely from those uh, clients that might be sending data to your Elasticsearch cluster or, uh, you know, might be making search queries. And it is a unidirectional connection. So it is a one-way connection from those clients to your deployment endpoints that can belong to Elasticsearch or Kibana or APM or any of our other uh, hosted products. And all of this happens through a private link endpoint on the consumer network that has a private IP address. And all of the traffic is guaranteed to traverse only through the cloud provider network. And to add to that, you know, you can, um, as a client, uh, to make sure that only certain clients have access to those endpoints, you can use IAM policies and network security groups to restrict access to those endpoints themselves. Uh, so from a client perspective, it almost seems like the Elasticsearch cluster is actually hosted in your own network because they are only interacting with this private endpoint that has a private IP address. So, how does it make security management easier, right? And uh, this actually speaks to the three tenets that we've built Elastic Cloud around, which is speed, security, and simplicity. Uh, so in terms of security, I've already talked about how it is all the communication happens through a private IP address. I've talked about you know, how traffic stays within the cloud provider network. Uh, in terms of simplicity, uh, you know, this, it's like I said, it's easier to set up because in, if you have experience setting up VPC peering uh, and you need to agree to non-overlapping IP address spaces or if you have experience setting up an internet gateway, uh, this is a much simpler experience because you set up an endpoint uh, and you set up a DNS and that's it, your, all of your clients can access that DNS to access the endpoint. And to them, that is the experience. And then you can restrict access through that endpoint 
using IAM policies and network security groups. And it's emerging as a pretty familiar cloud security pattern uh, with all three cloud providers having an implementation as well as them actually uh, using private link for their own services or recommending private link for their own services. So for instance, AWS recommends uh, private link to connect to Kinesis or even to their own S3 endpoints if you want to connect to them securely. And they're, these endpoints themselves are set up to be secure and reliable uh, and scalable. So you can horizontally scale these endpoints, create more than one endpoint uh, if you think the traffic is going to spike to these endpoints. So with that, I'll just go into you know, why it's important and what challenges it helps you solve. So it simplifies your network architecture, as, as I said, if you're using internet gateways or if you're uh, you know, setting up network peering, this is a much simpler way to do it. Uh, and it completely eliminates data exposure across the public internet, making it much more secure to connect to third-party services like Elastic Cloud and actually um, you know, making sure that your critical workloads are accessing data securely. Uh, and in terms of the challenges it helps you solve, I want to frame it in the way customers ask us for these options, right? So customers will often come to us and ask us for VPC peering. And private link is actually better than VPC peering because like I mentioned, it is a unidirectional connection and not a bi-directional connection like VPC peering is. Uh, customers will ask us about, you know, I want to send my data securely. I never wanted to traverse the public internet. And this is again, a option for that, right? Because all the data stays within the cloud provider's network. And then simplifying your network architecture is another good use case uh, where you do want to eliminate using an internet gateway or you don't want to set up BPC peering. Uh, regulatory compliance is a big, big uh, reason why uh, you know, customers use private link because it comes up as one of the controls you might need to meet regulatory compliance or, or just you know, exceed what you need to do in terms of securing your data on cloud uh, provider networks. So with that, I'm actually going to move to a demo and I'm going to demo using uh, GCP Private Service Connect on Elastic Cloud as well as Azure Private Link. Uh, and on the right, on the left side, you see that I have also created, I created an instance on GCP um, and I've created a VM on GCP and I'm logged into that VM on the bottom right terminal. And then on the top right, I'm actually just on my own system, right? Which is my machine. Um, so for the purposes of this demo, like I said, I've created a deployment on Elastic Cloud. Uh, this deployment, if you look at the endpoints for this deployment, you can actually access this deployment using the public endpoint, right? So here you see that I'm at, I have this public endpoint. Uh, if I just copy this endpoint and paste it, this is the public endpoint and I have a username and password and I'm just you know, doing a curl command to this, which means I'm trying to connect to it. And you can see that I get a response back and I can actually connect to it from my own system as well, right? Which is, uh, you know, not on the same virtual network. It's, it's just a machine that's trying to connect to it. And you can see I get a response back from my Elasticsearch cluster here as well. Um, so I have still not told my deployment that, you know, you need to restrict access only from this VPC to this deployment. And you can do that by associating that filter that I just created with a deployment. So I'm just going to associate it with a deployment. And now my deployment should not be accessible using the public endpoint. And I get a forbidden here from my machine. I'll also actually get a forbidden if I try to access it from the VPC itself. But I should be able to access it using that private um, the private DNS that I created. Uh, so here I am using the private DNS, which is this psc.uscentral1.domain. Uh, and I'm using the cluster ID of my elastic search cluster. We don't yet support aliases, but you can use the cluster ID. So I'm just using the cluster ID of my elastic search cluster and a valid username and password. And you can see that I get a response back from my elastic search cluster, as well as uh, the IP address that it results to is actually the private IP address of the private link endpoint uh, that I just created. So uh, you see that this is, you know, 192.168.45.12. Uh, so that's that's basically, you know, now this deployment is 
only accessible from within this VNet using this endpoint. A client that's trying to access it from anywhere else will not be able to access it. So you've logged down this deployment. I can do a similar demo. I'm going to do a similar demo on Azure as well. And for this, I've again created a uh, deployment uh, on Azure US East 2. Uh, there are no traffic filters that I've set up for this right now. Uh, and the process is very similar on Azure to what I just showed you on GCP. So you start with creating a private link endpoint. Uh, and I won't go through the process of creating this endpoint. It's very similar. And you use uh, our documentation has the you know, service name for the region. So I have used the service name for US East 2 in this case. And uh, it, the process is very similar to how we did it on uh, GCP. You end up creating a private link endpoint. This private link endpoint has a private IP address, as you can see here. Uh, and you basically, once you create the private link endpoint, you also, again, need to create the DNS to resolve to that endpoint. Uh, so I have created a private hosted zone uh, for US East 2, and I have created, uh, sorry, this is not the right one. Uh, I have created a, a, a record for the uh, endpoint that I just created that maps to the IP address of that endpoint. Uh, I've also similarly you know, created a VM on Azure Azure on the left side, you can see that I have the VM on Azure on the left uh, bottom, and then I have my own machine, right? So it's the same drill. I should be able to access my uh, deployment using the public endpoint from anywhere if I have the right username and password, and I am able to. Uh, but the next thing you need to do is actually create a traffic filter and associate it, right? So adding a traffic filter, it's Similar, you select Azure, you select the region where your deployment is hosted, private link endpoint, and then I'm just going to give this a name, uh, Apasticon, and this needs a resource name and a resource ID, and this is again a cloud uh, specific or a cloud provider specific uh, idiosyncrasy, right? Each one has a different set of fields. So this is available on Azure through the console. The private link endpoint name is just this private endpoint tech um, that I'm going to give it. And then the uh, resource ID is basically this good that is available also on Azure. Uh, and once you add these and create the filter, you can associate it with a deployment um, here like I did previously, I'm just gonna use the one I just created. And now, you know, it should become inaccessible from my machine using the public endpoint and even from within the VNet, but you should be able to access it using this private link endpoint, right? That you just set up. So you, you just set up a DNS for this private link endpoint and it should actually be accessible through that private DNS. Uh, and this is this is my setup. This is the endpoint that it should resolve to. And you see that I get a response back, and also um, it resolves to that private IP address you see on the right side. So it's going through the endpoint, and it's able to connect to the cluster. So now this cluster again is only available through this VNet. It's not accessible from anywhere else. Uh, and anyone who's trying to access it from outside this VNet using a public endpoint will not be able to access it. So you've logged down access to this uh, to this deployment using private link. Uh, with that, I uh, I'll just leave you with a few uh, more talks and a few more uh, resources we have in terms of you know understanding AWS private link, private service connect, and Azure private link. Uh, and we've also done some, dem some demos and webinars in the past, which are available to you. Um, thanks for coming to my session again. I hope this was helpful.